Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the Peabody, the South Grand Hotel. Southern novelist David Cohn once wrote that the Mississippi Delta begins here in the lobby of the Peabody Hotel, and that phrase is as true today as it ever was. The Peabody's history begins back in 1869 with a couple of boxes here at Maine and Monroe. Colonel Robert Brinkley was our founder. He set out to build the finest hotel in the South had ever seen and named it the Brinkley House. He succeeded on the first point, but just before the grand opening, his good friend Mr. George Peabody passed away. Mr. Peabody was not just a good friend of the owner, he was also a humanitarian and philanthropist. And it wasn't in his honor, but the name was changed at the last minute from the Brinkley House to the Peabody Hotel. And the Peabody has always been a symbol of Southern hospitality and elegance. It was so made on until 1923. It had been decided we needed to expand and relocate it here, 149 Union Avenue. After two years and five million dollars of construction, on September 1st, 1925, the Peabody reopened its doors to the beautiful hotel we stand in today. The Peabody has also served as a social center here in Memphis. We have played host to countless weddings, proms, graduations, and celebrations. Many of those have been held up on our Peabody rooftop, or are actually hosting a private event tonight. So unfortunately, the rooftop will be closed. But I do encourage us, ladies and gentlemen, to visit us in our memorabilia room. It's up here on the mezzanine, just above the gift shop. In there, we have artifacts, right. stories, and the And we, of course, have my favorite artifact, a memo from our general manager to the chef over at Chez Philippe, saying that there will be absolutely no duck served on any menu here, but no doubt. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are, of course, here to see the march of those Peabody Ducks. But if we haven't done so before, it may surprise us that our whole tradition here got started with a bit of a practical joke. In 1933, our general manager, Mr. Frank Shutt, and his friendship were out hunting in Arkansas. They brought with them a few things to help them out. Some live duck decoys to help them hunt, and some dead animals to help them keep warm. Now, the gentleman did an absolutely terrible job hunting, but managed to keep plenty warm in the cold of backwaters of Arkansas. And so it was a bit of a surprise to them when they returned to the hotel after their hunting trip, they realized that they had forgotten to leave their three English call-ups back at the farm. Improvising, they snuck them into the hotel lobby and let them loose into our fountain instead. They were tired for the evening, but just when they came downstairs the next morning, they found a few things they didn't expect. First of all, the ducks had stayed in the fountain the entire night long. They didn't hop out, flop about the lobby or water wall to see the sights from Memphis. And just surprisingly, a group of guests had gathered to welcome and applaud the new visitors. New visitors today turned out to me, for we have had ducks as permanent residents here at Peabody for the past 79 years. Now, in 1940, we had a gentleman working for us, a bellman, Mr. Edward Pembroke. Mr. Pembroke was a retired animal trainer for Wrigley Brothers and Barnum Bailey Service. He told us, if given the opportunity, he could train five northern mallards, one male to drink, and four females to hang to march across the rooftop, ride down the elevator, and march down the red carpet into our lobby fountain every morning at 11 o'clock. There they would stay until 5 p.m., and he would usher them out of the fountain, march them back up the red carpet, up the elevator, and back to their rooms. Mr. Primer did this for us for 15 years. He also took the ducks all across the country. He was on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. He was featured in People Magazine. He ended up in a very special guest appearance on Sesame Street for National Rubber Ducky Day. <laughs> Mr. Bremer did so much for the hotel, but especially for our ducks, that he was named the world's first duck master. My name is Anthony. I'm only the fifth duck master since 1940. And in just a few moments, it'll be my honor to continue our tradition for you. But first, on rare occasion, I have the honor and privilege of sharing the duties of Duck Master. Today is one of those days. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lila and Ruby Sayon. Thank you. Thank you. I want everyone to know what it means to be an honorary duck master here at the Peabody. It's an official station, it has official duties, and as such, it has an official proclamation. It does read. Whereas the daily march of the world famous Peabody Ducks is a time honored tradition, because in 1933 it attended by countless visitors, and whereas the care and prediction of the Peabody Ducks must be attended to on a daily basis, and can only fall the persons of high standing and great distinction. And whereas you are such people, be resolved that on March 28, 2012, Lila and Ruby Sager have been chosen honorary Duck Masters. Yeah. Yeah, hey, hey.
in honor of the event, I have commissioned for you your very own honorary Duckmaster Duck. Alright, you can take some ducks home with you. No Duckmaster is complete without the very own honorary Duckmaster Kane. Those ladies will need those in just a moment. You'll help me march the ducks out of the fountain, down the red carpet, up the elevators, and back to their rooms. We do ask, ladies and gentlemen, that if we're here by the red carpet and the entrance to the elevator, that we keep those areas clear. We also ask that if we uh, are secure by the carpet, that we resist the urge to reach out and touch the ducks. They're wild animals here with us after all. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the most important part, please. Take as many flash photos as you like. You're all guests with us here today at Peabody, and this march is for you. Thank you for joining us today, ladies and gentlemen, and again, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please you have and your attention, please. One more minute. Welcome to the historic Peabody Hotel. At the center of the Grand Lobby, the lunch where the Mississippi Delta has been set to begin, stands the classic Peabody model, carved from one piece of Italian travertine marble. Although famous in its own right, the fountain is better known to world over because of its residents. If I may direct your attention to the fountain now, you will witness a tradition begun in the 1930s at the South Grand Hotel. An experience uniquely yours as a guest of the Peabody. Preparing to return to their penthouse on the plantation roof for the night. <laughs> 